That's for the Bryan brothers. Lars Graf helping administer the coin toss. And it looks like uh, Moody and Perry will decide. So a second glance and a of the obligatory photographs before this match gets underway. And why not? The top team in the world and certainly uh, America's brightest hopes in terms of doubles. Well, and let's see what Mika Bucken has in store for us now. Mika? <laughs> I found myself in the plaza surrounded by the Pino and Bant and Black Belt Karate Kids. Just some of the excellent <laughs> tennis for loser activities going on around the ground today. And these kids here are super talented. I'm a little afraid, though, because they're very good at what they're doing. And right here with me, I've got lovely Andre Fonseco. Is that right? Now, I've always wanted to know how to do a karate kick. Can you show me? Okay. First of all, there are four parts to a front kick. Yeah? The chamber, the kick, the chamber back. Okay, well, let's do one of those first. You ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> so all this and lots more going on around the grounds. So I'm going to check in on the paddle tennis and see what the players are doing off the court. All that and lots more. You ready? One more. Back to you guys. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mika. It looks like she's getting the hang of it. If she, if she doesn't make it here, she, she can certainly make it with the Rockettes. She's got that kick down. She's having a lot of fun. That's the one thing we know from Mika. Every time we see her, she's enjoying herself. Well, she's kept us plugged into all the events and activities going on around the grounds. But let's turn our attention now to center court. And here's Bob Bryan. Five Grand Slam doubles titles with he and his brother, Mike. And certainly... These guys are what it's all about when you watch doubles because they make a lot of balls, they put the ball into play, they force other teams to play a lot of tennis, and they're fun to watch. And they have big power as well. They move so well, obviously, as a team. They've played together since birth in this sport of tennis, and there's no team quite like them. They've won more doubles titles than any brother duo in the history of tennis, and by the end of their career, they may break every doubles record. Well, their opponents tonight Here's Todd Perry, very skilled doubles player. Five career doubles titles on his resume. As you said, Jimmy, they won a title earlier this year. Last year, he played with Simon Asplin. He made the switch this year to Wesley Moody. And that's what happens sometimes with doubles teams. They break up and hook up with new partners. And this is a good player to hook up with. Wesley Moody, very talented indeed. Wesley Moody with a big serve, a big game. He's a dangerous doubles player. Came out of the qualifying at Wimbledon, the only team ever to do that, and then win the Wimbledon title a couple of years ago. Hasn't really built on that with his partner in that tournament, Huss. And so he's decided decided to split off and try his luck with the Australian Todd Perry, who's known for having maybe the best volleys on the doubles tour. Doesn't serve quite as big. Well, here is our, our first-round match, I should say, our championship team from last year, the Bryans, in a first-round encounter that should be very compelling. Stay with us. It is up next. Hi, it's Daddy. I'm all done here, so I'm on my way to the airport. I'm going to see you soon. Okay, I'm at the airport now. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I got you a present. It's me again. I'm about to get on the plane, so I'm going to see you real soon. I love you. She's not on the couch again, is she? Susie? You're not on the couch again, are you? That's Italian leather. And you know leather's a no-no for you. I'm not going to get off the phone until you get down. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Scotland Gardner is a real Geico customer, not an actor. So to help tell her story, we hired an actor. My husband totaled our new SUV on my birthday. But you know I still love him. Less than six hours after the accident, the Geico claim adjuster was at my house. Well, I put on some tangerine lip gloss and answered the door. Geico service turned out to be the best birthday present I could ever want. I was one lucky woman. <laughs> Geico. Real service, real savings. Panasonic presents the Tennis Channel Open is brought to you in part 
by Mirage Las Vegas, the official hotel and casino for the Tennis Channel Open. By Icy Hot Sleeve, gets Icy to dull the pain, then hot to relax it away. By Emergency, feel the good. And by Panasonic, ideas for life. Well, can you believe that this was once a pioneer town, a big stopover. Now it's a stop on the ATP Tour. Tonight, doubles action. Bob and Mike Bryan, Wesley Moody and Todd Perry. This is a first round encounter that uh, you could see as easily on a Sunday, a championship match as you could uh, in a first round. So this will be something good. Looking forward to it. As always, uh, great to see the Bryans out here again. They uh, contribute to this event in so many ways, but now they're going to get down to business and try and get their campaign started. Well, they played this team in the third round of the Australian Open this year already, and it was a pretty tight affair where they won the first set 6-3, but Moody and Perry served for the second set at 5-3, and they actually broke Wesley Moody, the bigger server of the two, to get back in that set, and it went to a tie break. Bob Ryan, 28 years old, 6'4", turned pro in 98, and they have rocketed up the rankings in doubles. Ladies and gentlemen, career high ranking, obviously number one, and have only lost one match this year. You can see Mike is actually not as tall as Bob. Bob is an inch taller. So they're not perfect twins, but they're pretty darn close. And also that career high ranking of number one has only lost one match this year. They perfectly complement each other, these two, as a team. Yeah, and they're uh, difficult to tell apart if you're trying to play to one opponent or another. But let's go down to Mika Buck, and now he is with Bob and Mike's coach, David McPherson. Mika? Yes, I am actually with uh, David McPherson. Now, you're the man behind the brilliance of the Bryan brothers. The guys in the booth were talking about how they were like the Federer of the doubles tour. What, what's their approach coming into a match like this when obviously they're the favorite? Yeah, well, they're always the favorite, like <laughs> Roger always is. So, you know, that's difficult, I suppose, but it's a situation you want. You want to be number one. So, they, uh, like Roger, they just each match is a challenge, oh, and yeah. they just go after it in a positive fashion. And what about the temperature and the conditions this week? How have they been adjusting to that? Well, it's especially cold, as you know, I'm <laughs> sure we, we both know, but at least the wind is down tonight, so uh, the, the standard of tennis should be real high. And what's the key to their success this week? Well, they've just got to get through. It's always one at a time, and uh, and Wesley and uh, Todd are a formidable team. So they've got to, you know, come out uh, with a lot of intensity, try and you know get the first break, and uh, you know and keep the pedal to the metal. Okay. Thanks very much. Back to you guys. Well, the Bryans certainly know how to keep the pedal to the metal. These guys are a force. They keep coming at you, whether it's with returns, serves, or volleys. Or in between points, they're jumping around, chest bumping each other during the match, or a bundle of energy, the Bryan brothers in all their matches. A bit like Nadal in the fact that they don't just walk to go serve, they run. First set, Bob Bryan to serve. Here's Lars Groff, no relation Ready. to Steffi. Right off the bat, the big first serve of Bob Bryan and Mike there for the winner. Missed it wide. Well, you can see it's dropped below 50 degrees, and uh, the winds that we had earlier this week have died down somewhat, although we'll get the occasional gust, but uh, it is fairly clear. And we'll be able to get through this evening, hopefully, with no problems. Of course, when Bob Bryan's serving like that, that could be a problem for Moody and Perry. Well, there's a 132. He's got some serious heat on the serve. And some people would say that he could have played singles. He's got the big serve, big forehand that you see so many singles players with. He actually had a win in the Davis Cup against the Czech Republic. He played the dead rubber match after the U.S. had clinched, and he took out Lucas DeLuy on a red clay court. And DeLuy is a fairly formidable player for the Czech Republic. My point exactly. I think he could play some singles, but they have decided to uh, concentrate on the doubles, and they've made a pretty good living at chess doubles. Well, 
Udi's out of South Africa. And you can see very tall, very strong, and very accomplished as a doubles player. Highest ranking in doubles of 17. He slipped a little bit to 48 in the world right now. As a team, they've had a pretty good start to the year. Six and two, we showed you. They won a title already, as we mentioned, in Adelaide. And here's Todd Perry winning in his hometown of Adelaide, Australia. He's 30 years old and the smaller of the, any of the players out on the court by a long shot. He's currently ranked 17th in the world near his career high. The smallest and the oldest. And they'll be trying to target Perry serve, who does not possess the delivery that Moody does. No, he's known for backing up the serve, the weaker serve with some great volleys. It's in. Well, that is one of those, you know, sort of hidden skills that the Bryans possess. They stand up at the net and have amazing reflexes. Yes, they do, and there's no fear. They'll stand up there even if the guy has a sitter volley in their face. Instead of turning their back, they have confidence in their hands. And Mike, I think, wasn't sure whether that volley was going in or not. That's what caused him to miss the volley. I think there was just a moment's hesitation as this was not a great first volley. Mike should have been there easily for that ball. Mike Bryan's return, playing that I formation. Mike probably the more solid of the two on a return of serve standpoint. He seems to make a little bit better contact consistently on the returns. Here it is from the net cam. A little close in reflex action. Consider how well he can volley. Tough start, really, for Moody. He has not gotten a first serve in yet, and that's a recipe for getting broken. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable gets by Bob. So remember, doubles is no ad scoring, deciding point. So we have a break point and a game point. And Mike Bryan, the one that almost always takes the return on these deciding points for the Bryan brothers team. for no reason at all. He was so excited. <laughs> Great backhand and then some good hands from Bob Bryan up at the net. Finding the opening. And let's see what happened. Oh, a near ankle twist is like falling over his own feet. He'll be happy to know we showed that graceful move. Can we remind him about that tomorrow morning when we see them at breakfast? Absolutely. Each morning we have... Uh, Bumped into the guys, having a nice early breakfast. Well, obviously, you never like to start off a game with a double. But certainly in the no-ad scoring format, it just seems like that first point is even more important. Certainly a lot of pressure early in games when you're the server and Moody didn't react well to it. Didn't serve very well in his serve game. Mike Bryan. 
the weaker of the two servers. Bob, that lefty serve is very formidable. Mike's is the game. If you're going to have a chance to break serve, that's the man you want to get to. Bob's not sure, but Mike, the server felt like he'd hit a pretty good serve. We'll see if he's right, and he's not. So the Bryans lose one challenge. That's great work from Moody and Perry. Great return from Todd Perry. Nearly hit his partner. He got such angle on the return. And now he's got Mike Bryan back at the baseline on his own serve and takes advantage. Timely serve into the body. Now that's a serve that they will use, not just trying to hit corners, these two, as the body serve is a serve that doubles players especially seem to employ that strategy more often than they do in singles. They're not just going for aces, they're going for... There's another good body serve, two in a row from Mike Bryan. It's tough to get on a lot on a return when it's right at your body. You're fighting it off and it allows the net man to be able to pick off any weak replies. serve and they hang on to a three love lead when we come back Mika Buck and we'll get our Franklin Templeton gaining perspective from one of the fans here on site I'm thinking of a number between 450 and 850 do you know what it is it's my credit score and it happens to be 720 the higher my credit score the better chance I have of saving a lot of money do you know your credit score do you know what's in your credit report you can find out right now at FreeCreditReport.com. You can even print it out if you want to. How much easier could it get? Log on to FreeCreditReport.com. That's FreeCreditReport.com. Free Credit Report offer applies with enrollment in triple advantage. Tennis shorts. Making time for tennis. Trying to fit tennis into your busy lifestyle? Turn a match into a business meeting. Pair it with a power breakfast or lunch and close the deal on the court. Join a league. Knowing ahead of time when and where you'll play each week makes scheduling a snap. If you're traveling for business or pleasure, don't forget your hotel may have a court. No matter how busy you are, there's always a way to get a game in. Tennis shorts can be found at thetennischannel.com. Time. So the Bryan's up three love. Let's go down to Mika Buckin. Mika? Okay. I've just found Barbara in the stands. Now, what do you think the key factor is in this match? Well, I certainly think that they're... Uh, the fact that they're twins and they've been together so much and they're inspired mm -hmm. uh, by being our team in this country. Okay, so the, the fact that they're the hometown boys is a key, a key factor in this match. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay, back up to you guys. That's the Franklin Templeton gaining perspective is that they're hometown boys that aren't really hometown. They're not from Las Vegas as far as I know. Well, she is quite skilled and I have a feeling that your job is in jeopardy. Particularly when it comes to doubles. You've been getting a number of uh, sort of uh, inquiries about your doubles expertise. I happen to know that you won the French Open mixed doubles, which is a heck of a result. I keep reminding you of that so you will remember it from time to time. Now, yes. to tell our viewers who you won it with. I won it with Andrea Yeager, and I was carried to the title by her when we were 16 years old. That's amazing. That's what, what a result. And who'd you beat in the finals? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, it was a long time ago, but it was Betty Stova and Fred McNair. Fred McNair, all right. I was trying to come up with, you know, Maureen Connolly or some name. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going that. back, yeah. <laughs> Second serve for Perry, 30 15. 
Of course, that fan was actually from Camarillo, so she had so a little a hometown, hometown knowledge, yeah. Exactly. gets his side on the board. Here's our icy hot injury report. Vince Spadia has withdrawn from the tournament because of an ankle injury. So uh, sadly, he lost his opening round match to Hewitt. Things did not improve with ankles, so he has pulled out. And incidentally, he was in our feature match coming up next. So instead of having Spadia, we'll have Yen Sun Lu. He's from Taipei. A chance to uh, see this young player who will be the lucky loser in his place. Now will be Lu taking on Thomas Johansson. Johansson, a former Australian Open champion. One of the best Swedes playing tennis on the tour right now. That is some measure of respect for the Todd Perry return. Bob Bryan trying to go for a little bit extra, knowing that Perry's got a nice little backhand. Of course, that one wasn't so nice for his partner, however. That one got uh, his partner right in the right hip. lob from Mike Bryan. At night, it's a little more difficult. You can get that ball up above the lights. Took a long time for this ball to come back down, and Moody knows he's supposed to hit an aggressive shot from there, and maybe he would have been better off putting that ball back in play with both Bryans at the baseline. So the Bryan brothers get to 4-1. Another feature when we come back, Joel Drucker. Hi, this is Carlos Moyan. Hi, I'm Taylor Dent. Hey, I'm John Macrono. Hi, I'm David Nalvandia. And you're watching the Tennis Channel. So, 12 o'clock tea time, someone rear ends us. Day shot, right? Except I just switched to Progressive Direct Online. They gave me a couple of competitive prices. I pick Progressive and save 400 bucks a year. And I've been trying to tell these guys I also get their concierge service. So I drop off my car, pick up a rental, and we're gone. So I save 400 bucks and our tea time. Fantastic. Progressive Direct. It's about you. And it's about time. Sign up online and save 50 bucks. Let the games begin. The biggest month in professional tennis starts with the Pacific Life Open. The best players in the world return to the spectacular Indian Wells Tennis Garden in the Southern California desert, March 5th through the 18th. To order tickets, visit PacificLifeOpen.com or call 866-272-1260. It only comes once a year, so order your tickets today. The Pacific Life Open. Let the games begin. Well, our Tennis Channel journalist, Joel Drucker, who's helping us out this week in Las Vegas, he has a little something to share with us about the Bryan brothers. Everybody knows how much aggression and energy the Bryan brothers bring to their doubles matches. A lot of that they got from their father, Wayne. But there's another half to the Bryan brothers' story, and that's their mother, Kathy. She was a great player. She was ranked 11 in the country. She was a pro, and she was the one who took them when they were growing up back to court 12 at the Cabrillo Racquet Club, taught them a lot about the art and craft of doubles. 
taught them the nuances, taught them about touch, taught them about finesse, how to keep the ball low, how to work the court, and then do the things that would set up their power and their strong shots that make them such a good doubles team, so versatile, so disciplined, so able to know their way around the court. They're such a smart team, Mike and Bob, bring so much to the game. Now, we're going to be keeping our eyes on Wayne tonight. He's been known to get so nervous that he won't even watch them play. So we're going to have to be straight in a look and see where Wayne is tonight. And it should be very interesting. All right. Thank you, Joel. And uh, it really was a family affair. See, Taylor Dent, uh, his father, Phil, and his mom, Betty Ann, both played the tour, as did Joachim Johansson's father, Leif. He played uh, on the Davis Cup team in Sweden with Bjorn Borg. And Vera Sukova was the mother of Cyril Suk and Helena Sukova, so there were two offspring for her that made it. Foot fault call on the Moody first serve at 30 love. He, what happened on that first serve, Moody, was that his back foot was across the middle. Was in, he was serving the deuce court, and his foot crossed that center line. And so they, that's who called the footfall. He wasn't going across the baseline like you would normally think. See, Mike did exactly what I thought should have done the point before. He was misjudging that lob slightly. It's a little difficult to see, and so instead of trying to crank a winner, he just put it back in play. Both players back at the baseline with Bob up at the net. Advantage Bryans. So much about doubles is, of course, the shot making the things you can produce, but also the decision-making on what shots to hit at the what time. When to move, when to poach, all those things come into play. The tendencies of your opponent, where they like to go on big points. <laughs> David McPherson actually very good at scouting that particular part of the doubles game. He seems to know what teams like to do at big moments. And how can you identify that if you are scouting out opponents? you just got to be watching when it's the tight situations where they tend to go. McPherson was a player himself and played a lot of these guys in doubles. He was a double specialist. So what points do you want to watch? You want to watch the 30-15 points, deuce points, obviously the well, no-add points. Deciding, the deciding points, yeah. yeah. Well, here's a, a Geico match stat. The Bryans not doing badly when they get that first serve in. Perfect. Last. They've got pretty big first serves. It really helps things out. They're struggling a little bit on second serve at 40%. They happen to be getting a lot of first serves in, so that's a big help. And Perry did a good job just defending himself that time. defensive lobs before they were able to finally capitalize. Yeah, Perry didn't do quite enough with that overhead and then tried to do too much with the drop volley. Could have just got it back in play solid. They had good positioning in the point. And again, that's the decision making. You have these split second moments and you have to make a decision. At the very least, you want to make the high percentage play and the drop shot then not the right one. Okay, right, right. Well, the game could have been a little different, but instead the Bryans win it at low.
harmony. We met, but we also went through a process that allowed us to know each other first. The attraction was there from day, from one. day one. I've never felt anybody that has accepted me so completely in my entire life. Find that one person that is going to appreciate you and love you passionately for who you really are. Okay, where have you been all my life? <laughs> you know, how come I didn't meet you earlier? It all starts with your personality profile. Yours free when you visit eHarmony.com today. Well, some young tennis fans and enjoying a bit of tennis and also a cold drink on a cool evening here in Las Vegas. Of course, their parents are wisely staying warm with a blanket. But the Bryans have been uh, warming up pretty nicely, up 5-2 here in this opening set. And things are supposed to warm up over the weekend, Jimmy, so uh, you I'm might not have forward. to wear the sweater. Looking forward to that, actually. I'm a Florida boy these days. This is a little cooler than I'm used to. But you're originally from Buffalo. Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> well, I'm a little like you. I'm down in Orange County now, originally from Milwaukee. So I think we both knew what cold weather was like. And, and then forgot. <laughs> for wisely. What's funny is when you watch this matchup is that you would think Perry is the man to break as Moody has a pretty big first serve, but when they played at the Australian Open, it was Moody that they broke to get back in the second set. It was Moody they broke here in the first set. Part of the reason for that, Perry known as one of the better volleyers, Moody signaling which direction he's headed in. Nice finish there on a tricky high volley. Todd Perry hails from the same city as Leighton Hewitt is from, Adelaide, Australia. There's Mark Woodford, also originally out of Adelaide. Struggling with the lights on some of these defensive lobs. That should have been a routine over. Had great hands from Bob Ryan to stay in the point. Then the defensive lob and Perry misses badly. safely away from the Bryans Rackets. Bob's having a little bit of trouble getting that return away from Moody. They're playing that I formation and whichever way he goes, it seems as though Moody's there. When he went down the line, Moody went that way also. Big forehands hit it their way, and they fought them off nicely. And interesting to watch that attack. If maybe get a look at it. You can see, watch. The ball goes right down the middle, and watch Bob Bryan. He just attacks the middle of the court. He almost follows the ball there. Nice. Of course, he's hoping to follow it in and pick up anything that's popped up high. Unfortunately for him, it was a solid volley low. He couldn't do much with his poach. Ooh. <laughs> Tough break for Perry. That was going to be a nasty return. Bob Bryan has only lost one point in his two service games, and he's the man serving for the set. Well, 
Perry stayed home. Second serve, a pretty good return, and Bob almost helped thought himself there. He was sure Perry was poaching, yeah. and he was staying home. That's some big forehands from Bob Ryan back at the baseline. It's not where he wants to be on his own serve, but he came up with a couple of whippy left-handed forehands. Right there, hard and at the body. Well, this is the closest that Moody and Perry have been, 30 all. Yep. Trying to salvage a double fault. Well, they've only got one challenge left, so if they're wrong here, and they seem to think they are, they're lining up to serve at 30 40. Yep, it is out. So the double fault will stand, so a couple of breakpoint chances for Moody and Perry. Yes, what a time for that ace wide. What a huge point this is. It's either set or we're back on serve. That's what makes these doubles matches so intense, this no-add scoring. Huge swings with just one point. Now well, Perry got it up high, and Mike Bryan able to finish. Now they really escaped trouble in that service game and overcome them two double faults and win the opening set 6-3. And on the deciding point, a pretty good return. A tough serve and a good return from Perry, but then this forehand got a little high and Mike Bryan decided to tag Moody with the forehand volley. Hey guys, how you doing? That was uh, quite a tough set. You were able to get out of trouble in that last game. Yeah, I mean, uh, I missed a few serves there. Uh, you know, I would like to get that first serve in on a couple of those big points, but uh, I'll take it anyway I can. Uh. How are the conditions out there, guys? It's a little cold, I know. Is it windy? Is it <laughs> high like altitude? We're playing, in, we're playing in Alaska out here. <laughs> uh, but uh, you, you can see we've got towels over us right now, and we're, we're jumping around a lot to stay warm. It, it is cold. Anything you do differently? It's you stringing your rackets any looser or tighter? Uh, definitely a little tighter here. You know, it's a little bit of a contrast. you got the desert air, which is light, but, uh, you know, in the cool conditions, it's uh, pretty heavy. So you gotta you got to just weigh your options here. All right, guys. Good luck. Thanks. Guys. Thanks. So the Bryans take the opening set. More doubles from Las Vegas on Tennis Channel. Hi, I'm Chris Everett. This is Mara Safran. I'm Justina Henning Hadden. This is Rick Leach. And you're watching the Tennis Channel. Bragging, boasting, trash talking. Players do it, do you? The Tennis Channel takes bragging to all new heights when we pick friendly rivals to take on one week of training by two legendary coaches. It all prepares them to play each other in a no-holds-barred grudge match. How far will two friends go for bragging rights? Don't miss a new episode of Bragging Rights this month, only on the Tennis Channel. Remember, it's only bragging if you can't back it up. Murphy Jensen takes you around the globe. Dun, 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 dun. Do boys have Russian dolls? Where you'll see famous places. This is Kolomenskoye Park. It's a must-see when you visit Moscow. It's about seven miles from the center of the city. And hang in hot spots with famous faces. Comrade. Enjoy the ride with Murphy as your guide. Ah! This really feels funny. Only on the Tennis Channel. Log on to thetennischannel.com for a complete program guide. Panasonic Presents, the Tennis Channel Open, is brought to you in part by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. What happens here stays here. By Sing Beer, the world's most exotic beer. And by 
GeICO.com. 15 minutes could save you 50% on car insurance. An exciting night in Las Vegas. Beautiful Mirage. That's our headquarters for the week. A wonderful spot. Bob and Mike Bryan playing a very competitive set of tennis. This was uh, some entertaining stuff. Well, they won the set really because of winning the two deciding points in that set. The two deuce points, they won both. One to break serve and then to hold serve to win the set. Well, Moody and Perry, something to think about after having had some chances but not capitalizing. Well, we have just a moment here. The Bryans have left the court. Let's uh, go now to Allie Baker. She has an update on the USTA Women's Pro Circuit event going on here as well. So the match of the day in the Women's Mirage Cup was between Wimbledon semifinalist Alexander Stevenson and Angela Haynes. Angela Haynes has really shown her character, her strong character this year. She unfortunately lost her brother in a tragic motorcycle accident earlier this year. But she was telling me that she knows in her heart that he would want her to be out here competing and playing strong the way she has. He would be so proud of her this week. She's battled her way through three rounds of qualifying and then took out Stevenson today after losing the first set in a tiebreaker. She won the next two 6-1, 6-1. Tomorrow will be a real test for her. She's playing the number one seed, Akiko Morigami, and we'll see if she can continue her streak. On Sunday, we'll be showing the women's final at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time live. All right. Thank you, Allie. And yeah, we're looking forward to that championship match. Here uh, is uh, a quick glance at the seeds in the Mirage Cup as we see Bob and Mike coming back on court. Akiko Morigami, very accomplished player, Sophia Arvidsson. And uh, this is actually a pretty strong oh, event. There's a fair amount of prize money here, and uh, it's attracted a strong field. A lot of difficult names to pronounce in these uh, seeded players, so I'm glad you're doing the uh, finals there, Leaf. Well, in the world of tennis these days, there are a lot of syllables. It's a very international game. Yeah. Of course, Wesley Moody, that's uh, easy enough. Reminds me of a college player out of Georgia by the name of Wesley Cash. I don't know if you remember that fellow. We played against him. He was a bulldog back 100 years ago. <laughs> when I played the game. A good start for Moody. He uh, struggled in his opening service game. In fact, he lost it. So this would be a better start for him here to try and get a hold in the second set. Great hands for Moody as Bob Bryan decided to back up on that floating ball. I think he would have been better served moving in. There it is. He's going backwards. His weight's going backwards. Couldn't quite get as much pace on it as he would have liked. And just great hands from Moody. From the net cam. Hey. Well, that's a better start for Moody. He'll be happy with that. Because we're talking a little bit about college tennis, mentioning a name out of my past. Brian Brothers, a great, successful players out of Stanford University. Of course, Moody played for him out of college tennis, too. He went to a yeah. couple different schools, if I remember That's correctly. That's right. Auburn, Montgomery, and Alabama, and then he transferred to Boise State. So he was uh, an All-American there all four years of his college experience. So college really is still a nice place for these players to develop, and I think for a lot of players, it's the way to go because the tour is so competitive these days. It's not an easy way to make a living if you're not ready. <laughs> what an exchange. Yeah, that's nice to see those quick exchanges. You only get that in doubles. I mean, Mike Bryan is standing right on top of the net. This is a good return. Mike with a couple of good moves up there. Took a quick glance at Perry as if to say, yeah, I just dunked on you, man. I got you. 
15. The son Bob struggling with second serves. It's his third double fault in the last game and a half that he served. attended St. Peter's College in New Jersey, so I'm sure he has a little bit of college experience as well. Oh, yes, well, gets himself out of trouble down 15.30, so just slowly Moody and Perry are making some progress, but the Bryans have been able to keep them at arm's reach. Oh, what's funny is when they've missed first serves, the Bryan brothers have struggled on second serve points. They've only won for the match 36% of the points when they miss their first serve. And that stat could come back to haunt them if they have a game where they start missing a few first serves. a return Mike Bryan would like to have over again. 103 mile an hour serve. He's normally very solid off that type of serve. Ball got away from him a little bit. Just some serious close range work. A two-handed forehand volley, two-handed backhand volley from Bobby. Didn't have time to move his racket quickly enough with one hand. There's the first volley, but now he's just swatting it. Forget form at that point. Just get your racket on the ball somehow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is remarkable. Well, somehow Moody and Perry dodging bullets and able to move ahead 2-1. Plenty of pressure from the Bryans. Well, let's go down to Mika Buck, and she's with John Muir of Wilson Sports. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> you know what? You and I are just going to chat. Uh, we're going to chat. We're on right now, and I'm so excited about this K-Factor racket I've been hearing about. Who is playing with this? Uh, actually, a few players you might have heard of. Roger Federer switched before the Australian Open. Had I, think, I think I've heard of that guy. Yes, uh, Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Venus Williams just switched. And uh, we're very happy to announce last night uh, we launched here in Vegas that we've signed Marty Fish coming aboard to Wilson for K-Factor and Dmitry Tursunov, 20 in the world from Russia, switching over as well. So we've got a nice uh, list of players going. Okay, and what makes the racket special? How is it different to other rackets? It's really about control. We've really isolated the difference maker in, the di in what we can do in the frame from a technology standpoint. So there's really four key technologies at work in the racket. But at the end of the day, it's about control. And we want to give the ultimate control to all players, all levels. So the whole concept of control being a myth is no longer, is that right? <laughs> You've nailed it. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, have you been enjoying the tournament? have always loved coming to Vegas and Tennis Channel Open in Vegas. It's not going to get much better. Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much. Back upstairs. I want this. <laughs> Mika's trying to get a free racket there. She's a very smart girl. Of course, Bob and Mike Bryan, they also uh, sport the Wilson brand, and they're serving at 1-2 here in the second set. 
See, Perry is starting to return a little bit more. There. I mean, Mike was very surprised by how quickly that return got to him. It was a strange move, wasn't it, from Mike? He didn't really serve in volley with any authority. He sort of served and was expecting nothing as a reply, and so he got caught in no man's land. Ended up trying to hit a swinging topspin volley. First volley for Mike, but you get a feeling that they're the team at the moment that's under a little bit more pressure. They're struggling slightly to hold serve now. Second time in a row in this set, the Bryans have been down 15-30 on their serve, and in doubles, that's a tough score to be behind because it is no at scoring. One more point, you've got some break points. Pretty big second serve from Mike Bryan on a huge point. 100 mile an hour second serve right at the hip. in this game as Perry's played a beautiful game to this point. Made every return. Pretty good defensive lob that time to get back in the point. Moody's missed three backhands. Yeah, and the ball hasn't really been anywhere close. And you just wonder, maybe he needs to string that racket a little tighter. <laughs> a better backhand and he stayed down with it didn't try to do too much with it well this uh, is what you call a big point in any game anytime the deciding point in no ad scoring and well, the Bryans are 2-0 and in the first set on these deciding points and one of those was a set point and this is the first one of the second set and obviously the way Perry's returned this game he's the man taking the return point. Best point of the match. Now the best point of the tournament. Yeah, it was. And the deciding point as well. So it was a huge point. And we saw a little bit of everything in that rally. We saw reflex volleys. We saw some defense from the Bryan brothers. And we saw that final overhead. Now we said at the start of this match that this was two quality teams that you could easily see them playing for a title. Here they are playing in the first round and the Geico stat that's significant here. Moody and Perry finally winning a deciding point. And that's what's gotten them this lead. Now they just need to hold on to serve three more times. Nearly similar for them to the third round match at the Australian Open that these teams played as it was 6-3 first set for the Bryans. And Moody served for the second set and they ended up losing that set 7-6. Moody was broken. He will again, if they all hold from here, it will be Moody serving for the set again in the second set. Oh, you're almost like Rod Serling. You know, that's just... The Twilight yeah, Zone doubles it's match. It's very much so. At the Tennis Channel Open. the double scoring in the ATP system as opposed to the Grand Slam. Remember the third set here is just a 10 point super tiebreaker. Obviously the Australian it was traditional scoring in the final set. And also it was
reduced scoring. There's no no add scoring in the Grand Slam doubles. They lost the opening set, but have a 4-1 lead on the Bryans here in the second. It started with a simple idea. Build an automobile that takes the sheer joy of driving to a whole new level. Use advanced technologies without sacrificing fuel economy. Take advantage of a racing-inspired heritage. Provide an interior space that fulfills every need. The TSX from Acura. Now you can lease an Acura TSX for $2.99 a month for 36 months. What a beautiful evening in Las Vegas. They're shooting for the moon here at Tennis Channel Open. Bob and Mike Bryan have won the opening set. They're down 4-1 in the second. Well, here's a little comparison, Hawkeye comparison is the Brian serves, the lefty serves with a little more pace. It always seems as though that's the case. The lefty serves with more movement, and they seem to be a little bit stronger, and that's the case with the Brian brothers. Bob Brian, the bigger server of the two. This is the kind of game you want to play to reestablish some confidence, some momentum, so that you can come back and play a good game on your opponent's next service game. Perry is really getting on to the returns all of a sudden. He's gotten a groove, and you've got to do something, I think, if you're the Bryan brothers, to get him out of that groove. Maybe play a little eye formation. You don't normally see them do that much, but get him thinking about the return. Sometimes you can sort of suddenly just hone into some returns and you get hot, get in a streak, and that's where Perry is right now. is really trying to, a couple of times now, he's gone after Moody with some ground strokes, with some ferocious ground strokes. Moody's fought them all off. Well, that's one way to get a guy off the net, is literally drive the ball right at him, push him back. From 30 love, the Bryans lose three consecutive points. And this one could be slipping away fast here. Possible second break chance for Moody. did a good job the last time he received on a deciding point, so they're going there again. He has been the hot returner. And he's going to get a look at a second serve, so this is a tough moment for the Bryans. Hey, 
Boy, Mike Bryant had a play there and let the ball go. And one of the few times you see the Bryans with a miscommunication, normally their movement together is so synchronized. Here's a look at David McPherson, the coach of the Bryans. He's looking a little bit uncomfortable at this point. As you said, you normally see Mike on a floater like that. He's going to be all over it. And he started to make his move and decided against hitting it. So Perry serving for the set. did everything but win the point and they've played almost a flawless set one of the few times they've really made a poor error that was an incredible shot the one before by moody and then chest is incredible because it was so poor was that overhead Perry, he's uh, been a quarter finalist at the U.S. Open, a quarter finalist at the Australian and at Wimbledon. And he is knocking on the door of some big time results. And I think they lost something like 23 21 in the fifth set in the quarters of Wimbledon when he was playing with Aspelin. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's a nice finish. He's got a wonderful backhand volley. So one set all. Moody and Perry have uh, responded well after having lost that opening set. Yeah, that was quite a turnaround. Perry serving here at set point and one of the better volleyers in the game. Finishing it off with that high backhand volley. Well, we get a chance to talk with these guys now. And uh, guys, congratulations. You turned this around beautifully. What do you think was the key for you to find your best tennis? Uh, I just think uh, we started to find a bit of rhythm on the returns, and uh, once we started getting the points, I thought we uh, we won a fair few of them. So I think that was the key to the second set. Wesley, it seems as though uh, Bob Bryan's going at you a couple of times. He's tagged a few forehands right at the body. Is there a little bad blood or something going uh, on? No, no, not really. I think he's just trying to win the points and let me scare me a bit. But luckily, I've got uh, some quick uh, reflexes there, so kind of helps me out a bit. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, great set of tennis. Good luck in this 10-point uh, tiebreak. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right. Wesley Moody and Todd Perry. Boy, they showed their class, didn't they, in that second set? It'll come down to a final tiebreak for the third. The undeniable power of Panasonic Plasma. Nothing compares to America's best-selling plasma TVs. Panasonic. Ideas for life. I'm thinking of a number. Do you know what it is? It's 20 million. That's how many people have already checked their free Experian credit report at freecreditreport.com for some very good reasons. Now we can monitor all three of our national credit reports every day. It helps us save money and check for potential identity theft. I got my credit report and credit score online. 
in seconds. Isn't it time to get your free credit report and score? Well, log on now to FreeCreditReport.com. Offer applies with the Roman Triple Advantage. So one set apiece in this opening round doubles match. And this now a 10-point tiebreaker to decide. The first team to 10 with a two-point advantage will win the set and the match. Needless to say, Jimmy, every point is so valuable. Not much room for error here in this sprint format. 10 points. Well, and the Bryan brothers need to get a little momentum back. They've really rocked on their heels that second set. Now there's another body shot. Moody standing in, and sometimes that's what happens in doubles. You have to take one for the team. Well, he's taking a couple for the team now. That's happened a few times to him. A good first serve, and then this time Mike Bryan does go all the way across and takes care of that floating return. Now, what are these guys talking about now besides where they're going to serve? Are they, are they saying, do you want to cross? Do you should they we? are. They're saying where to serve and then whether or not which direction the net man should go in based on where the serve is. Into the body. Into the body, and I guess he decided to go across. That was the call. I actually like that eye formation. I think it makes it more difficult for the returner. He has to think a little bit about which direction to go in, whereas... Most of the time, if you're playing conventional, you just try to get that ball low and hard cross court. Well, that's a good smash. That was the best overhead of the night for Todd Perry. That has been a little bit of an outlet, a weakness that the Bryans can feel like, okay, I'll throw up the defensive lob to Perry. He doesn't have enough power to put it away. That time he put it away with some fantastic placement. Well, the same conversations going on in the Bryans' camp. Where are we going to serve? What kind of move will we make? Doubles. That was great hands. That was a tough point from the start as the return was hit so crisply. Bob Bryan, even though he was moving, was fortunate to get it back in play. And then great hands from Perry to make Bob Bryan come up with one more shot. Well, now who will blink first on the return point? That's the question is... The servers have done a good job in the tie break so far. Oh. <laughs> That's the kind of shot where it's a quarter of an inch that makes a difference between winning and losing this kind of match in a super tiebreak. A good return. Perry sees Bob Bryan move, goes down the line, and it just catches the top of the tape. Well, tennis matches are won and lost by the thinnest of margins, and that's a good example of how your fortunes can shift so dramatically. Another half inch, and it might have hit the net court and gone over. Instead, Perry down to four. And now, extra pressure in a way on the serve of Moody and Perry because they can't get down another point on their serve. They've got to hold here. Eye formation. Moody's signaling to his partner there where are you going to serve. Looks like they'll probably go down the tee. That was the second signal. That was the second signal. He was going to go, exactly, yeah. and he was moving right. I think if you're playing doubles at home at your club, you need to have a partner who can make those movements easily. Otherwise, you probably want to stay in the traditional format. Or who knows, you know, not only that, but they got to be able to place their serve where they say. If we say we're going down the tee and all of a sudden he goes wide because he doesn't have control, you might yeah. not even want to talk about it. Just get it in the box, play conventional. 
So here's the Bryans serving at 4 3. but it seemed a little bigger. Bryans have gotten every first serve in this time break, and I just completely jinxed him. <laughs> if Wayne were here, he'd say, would you please be quiet? And it's been so important for them to get first serves in is that second serve points, they are at 33% for the match when they miss that first serve as Perry has been tough on the return and then Moody's long and rangy up at the net making those poaches. They have been a tough team to deal with tonight. Back on serve in this match tie break. Well, it's not often you play a Wimbledon doubles champion in the first round. I mean, this is a quality matchup. Five points all. Nice one-two punch by Moody and Perry. service points. Now just to remind you, this is to 10. First team 210 with a two-point advantage. I mean, we could keep going on here. But this is not match point. It's not up to seven no. like a conventional tie break. Well, they will change sides again after this point. One thing we can say at any level of tennis, whether you're 3.5 or 6.0, a good coach like David McPherson will tell you, get a first serve in in doubles. And that is one rule that's standard for any level of play. Well, in, in this super tie break, the Bryans have missed one first serve so far, and it's the one point they didn't hold their serve point on. Just to reiterate your point, how important that first serve is, especially in doubles. Perry has been the hot returner. Let's see how he deals with Mike Bryan's first serve here. He won't have to deal with it. And let's see now how Mike Bryan deals with the low volley, which he's probably going to have to come up with here. top of the tape for Perry that could have made all the difference in this match, yeah. at least to this point. Well, Todd Perry's hero is Tony Roach. <laughs> I tell you, Tony Roach was one of the greatest doubles player to ever walk the earth. Great combination with John Newcomb, and uh, that had a little bit of that old school chip to it, but just grabbing the tape. So the Bryans at 7-6. Great hands, really, from Moody, too, to start that point. And then Bob Bryan just kept finding ways. And that was just letting that go. You don't realize how quick the reaction time mentally was for Bob Bryan, seeing that ball and being able to compute it in time that it was going to miss. Yes. Oh, what a return. 
And in the clutch, the boys deliver. Well, maybe a little bit of a mistake here on the serve. You don't want to go to Bob Bryan's forehand if you can help it on a big point. His backhand return is a little bit weaker, certainly, than his forehand. Bob Ryan's going to lose both his service points, but he's just lost one, and he's now serving to the man who's been hot returning. So it's not pencil in the Bryan's names yet. Yeah. Another match point here. First serve, very important here for Bob Ryan. points against serve and two of the match points on Bob Ryan's serve he had some room but he it did. just pulled it he curled it just a little bit too much and what looked about 15 seconds ago like a sure win for the Bryans all of a sudden you've got to win a point on Wesley Moody serve to win this thing Another change of sides, and you know, it's a little shocking, isn't it? Three match points have evaporated. Nine points all, so we're going to go into a little overtime here, but again, still, two-point deficit will decide it. Of course, at stake, quarterfinal matchup with, with Chris Haggard and Bjorn Pau. Haggard, another South African, like Moody, Pau the German. from having match points against them. Now they have one of their own, Moody and Perry at 10-9. Uh-oh, second serve, and they've struggled, as we've mentioned, on second serves. That was big hands again from Bob Ryan, wow. Good return for Moody. Struck it beautifully, hard and low. Bob getting his racket out helps that he's about a half an inch away from the net. It's tough <laughs> to hit it into the net when you're that close. What a volley. Ten points all. All of a sudden, the first serve evaporating for the Bryant. They need one, and he gets it. That was an important first serve to Perry, who's been damaging their second serves. How many fingernails left in this crowd? This is match point number four for the Bryans. Perry, another guy that desperately needs a first serve. His second serve is a little bit on the weak side, and it's a chance for Mike Bryan to unload on a return. The serve from the signal I could steal looks like it's going backhand. Yeah. Oh, there it is. The Bryants pull off an exciting win in the opening round. Yeah, talk about being tested early. We knew this was going to be a tough first round match. I don't know if we knew it was going to be quite that tough as it took a number of match points and a match point saved by the Bryan brothers to get through their opening round match and attempt to defend their Tennis Channel Open title from last year. Good solid return from Mike Bryan. 
and they live to play another day. Their signature move. They'll get